Hi, this is Sue Glenn. We're going to be calculating the Shannon Wiener Diversity Index. Uh, we're going to use the Breeding Bird Survey data that's available online to do that. The Breeding Bird Survey is uh, an annual survey that is done usually in May and June uh, all across the U.S. and Canada. And uh, people will go along a route that's uh, almost 25 miles long. They stop every half mile, so they get uh, 50 50 points and at each point they do a three minute point count so they will uh, write down uh, all of the the birds that they see or hear um, at that point along the route and uh, that data is available for us online I did a previous video about how to do one of these point counts so you can take a look at that this is uh, set up for my ecology classes, so I'm asking you to select two different survey routes that uh, anywhere in the country, pick uh, different states or different provinces or different regions. You might be uh, looking at Colorado and you want a survey in the mountains in the west or in the and in the grasslands in the east or something in New Jersey on the shore versus North Jersey in the hills or South Jersey in the farmland. Um, so you make sure that you get two different routes that are, are going to be interesting to look at the differences in the birds and uh, get the, the last 10 years of surveys collected in each route. Try to get a complete 10 years to pick pick one that has complete data. There's over 4,100 breeding bird survey routes across um, the U.S. and Canada, so you should have no trouble trying to find something. I'm starting in the simplest place to find, and that is the Patuxent Wildlife Research Center's breeding bird survey page. So it's a simple URL, pwrc.usgs, which is the U.S. Geological Survey, .gov, slash BBS for the Breeding Bird Survey. So uh, we've got this uh, uh, menu and we're going to start off uh, looking for uh, download data, which is on the right side under data and results. So I click there. Uh, read through the terms of use. Uh, once you have read all of that, click retrieve raw data. And there's two data systems. There's the online retrieval system and then there's the science-based site. <clears throat> science-based um, gives you a lot of data. Uh, so if you're looking to dive deep, you can go to the science space. We're going to go to the easy side. We're going to start with the enter retriever, re enter retrieval system. So we're going to look at species totals by route. So we're looking at quick data by route. And this includes data up until uh, last year, 2019. So uh, as this data site web, website updates, that date will update as well. Species totals for a route, click on that. So now I've already selected what route I want. So I'm gonna pick my country, my region, my route, and run method. And I'm going to pick the first one, the standard breeding bird survey S101. Then the start year. I'm going to I'm going to end with the most recent year they have, which is 2019. And I'm going to try to get 10 years worth of data. So let's look at the last 10 years for these birds. So that'll be 2010 is the first. Species status, I want all. The migrants, the non-breeders, the breeders, everybody. On the species order, I'm going to just make it easy, put them in alphabetical order. You probably don't understand the um, classification of phylogenetic order, but if you do, that might make more sense to you. And then, show. And here's the last 10 years data from that particular route of all the numbers of all the birds that they found. And so the easy thing to do here is just highlight this table right click copy open up an excel spreadsheet starting in the second line because i'm going to put my root name on the top line i'm going to right click paste just like that and now i've got all the data so i can just spread out my species name column by just moving this little line here so i can see all my species names 
and I've got my years and then I can go back to this site and I can get the information of the data set that I've just collected. And right click, paste that right there. And that way I don't lose track. And if I wanted to on my sheet, I can also go ahead and name that sheet, clicking on the name as the uh, Liberty Height, New Jersey. And you're going to get two different data sets. Um, so you're going to pick two different routes in two different, very different places. Um, is that enough difference? Two different, very different? All right. Um, you can also uh, take a look at the, um, the map site. So the Breeding Bird Survey route map page. And I could go to find the location. And this might be useful if you're looking at a place that you're really not familiar with. Uh, see what it's like. Uh, New Jersey, the Woodbury Heights. And I can click on the information for that route. And I can, I can grab from here the latitude and longitude. Now I can go into Google Maps. I can search on that. I just need to take out this word, start longitude. And hit enter. And it it's going to take me to where that actual Brainerd Bird Survey starts. It's going to take me to that location. Um, I can sort of look at what it's like. So this looks like it's in suburbia. I can uh, take my little guy. Dropping him on the ground. We can walk down the street and take a look at what this breeding bird survey is like. So we can get a, a pretty good idea of the habitat, what it's like down this road. And remember these surveys are every five miles for 25 miles so that they will stop for three minutes to get the data and uh, you can even sort of look around at this spot this might be a spot where they pull in to do a survey and uh, I can even just use my snipping tool and I could get a picture of it to put on my blog so uh, get quite a bit of information just looking around and seeing what the site is like. The diversity index we're going to be using is the Shannon Wiener Diversity Index. And there is a lecture that goes uh, with my class on um, diversity. And uh, I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. But uh, when we're looking at the composition of uh, communities, we see that, uh, that there's some species that are really common and some species that are not so common. And uh, here we have a bunch of, of grackles and uh, we can see that this, this is pretty much uh, dominated by one species. It's not terribly diverse, um, but it, we do find that the species we think about the most are the common ones, but uh, no, most species are not common. Most species are actually quite difficult to see and find and rare, which is why you don't really think about them that much. One measure we have of how diverse a community is is species richness. Species richness is simply the total number of species. So if you're just adding up how many different species there are in this flock of du ducks, we can, we can uh, call that the species richness, which is different from diversity. So species richness is just how many species there are, but it doesn't take into account the relative dominance of some over others. A more diverse community has a lot of individuals of different species, so they're more evenly distributed. So instead of having, you know, 90% one species and then 1% of all the others, um, you might have 30% uh, of each species or 30% of 
of uh, two species and 20% of another one. So they're more evenly distributed in the population or in the community. Like this little picture of uh, the diversity of songbirds sitting on a branch, very evenly distributed amongst different species. Uh, so species richness is how many different species you see. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six species sitting on this branch. Is the species richness? The species evenness is the relative abundance of the species, and this, these are even. This is very even there's there's one of each in this particular little community so these two factors how evenly distributed the numbers are among the different species and how many different species there are go together to define what species diversity is so these two factors combined richness and evenness are both components of species diversity and evenness is, is really just your relative abundance or relative dominance of different species here's a uh, picture out of our textbook. We use the textbook Ecology Concepts and Applications by Manuel Moles and Anna Scher, uh, eighth edition published by McGraw Hill. And, uh, and so they've got uh, two different communities up on the, the top left. You've got uh, very high species evenness. So we've got uh, the same number of species in each of them, but uh, this one in the bottom right. Uh, they, there's only one individual uh, for the species, and then the fifth species dominates. So this has a very low evenness. This is, this is not uh, very even at all because one species has most of the numbers. Whereas this one, the five species are equally distributed, so you have the same number of each five up there. And by the way, the picture on behind is a canopy of a forest. Uh, I know it looks like broccoli, but it's actually a forest canopy. It's interesting that forest canopies and broccolis uh, do kind of look the same. Here's a couple of forests, the same thing, um, but uh, in a in a real photograph instead of a cartoon uh, and this one could have the same number of species here but they might just be little saplings uh, dotted here and there throughout this aspen forest uh, waiting for a chance for the aspen to die and to grow up and take over this is probably uh, a, a earlier successional forest over here though you can see the nice even distribution of different colors in the fall and so you can see that this is a very diverse forest on the left the diversity index we're calculating comes from a field of information theory, um, and it is the Shannon Wiener Diversity Index. And uh, information theory was applied to ecology um, by uh, really largely by a group of Hungarian researchers uh, looking for uh, how you get sort of information out of uh, very no no noisy data um, originally was developed for code breaking because you'd have all this static and you're trying to find the the uh, clue to the code inside the static um, and uh, so Shannon Wiener Diversity Index uh, has been applied to ecology for looking <clears throat> at the diversity in a community and in order to calculate this index we uh, are going to take the relative dominance of each species. So the relative dominance is sort of the relative cover, the relative number of uh, abundance of each species. So it's based on the proportion of all the birds that we see that belong to a given species. So it's got a P sub I, proportion sub I, where I is what species we're dealing with. And so uh, you might have a species that takes up uh, from all the birds you saw, if you saw 100, 100 birds, if 10 of them were robins, then it would be 10 divided by 100, which is 0.1. So all these numbers of relative abundance are going to, a relative dominance are going to be less than one because they're a proportion. So we take that proportion and we're going to multiply it by the natural log of that proportion. So you've got a little multiplication thing going on right here. Uh, you know how equations work. Uh, and we take natural logs, so that's a, a base E log, and uh, 
as opposed to a base 10 log or a base 2 log. Um, and we take logs because it'll downplay the importance of big numbers. So when you when you log a number, let's say you're using a base 10 log and the number is 100, uh, the base 10 log of 100 is 2. It's taking that big number and making that uh, much smaller. And logs will make the, the bigger the number is, the more it's going to press it down towards the smaller numbers. Um, I'll show you some graphs of that in a minute. But we're going to take these uh, these logs so that we are going to uh, make the dominant species less important. Because as I said before, if you're dominated by one species, you're less diverse. So it's reducing the diversity of those dominant species. And then we just uh, balance that up by multiplying it by the original proportion. Since we're taking uh, logs of numbers that are less than one, all these numbers are going to end up being negative. We're going to add them up across all the species, and then we don't like dealing with negative numbers, so we're just going to end up multiplying it by negative one. So, so this negative at the beginning just means you're taking negative one and multiplying it by the sum of uh, the proportion times the natural log of the proportion. So let's look at that the logs for a second. So what I did, I, I made these little graphs where I took just different proportions. Um, so uh, across the x-axis, it would be a species that was a 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, up to 90% of the um, uh, individuals in the population and took the natural logs of those. So as you can see, they end up being negative numbers. So the natural log of a species that is uh, covering 90% is is uh, a very small negative number. And then the, the lower the percentage, the larger the negative number, the more negative it is. But remember, we end up um, multiplying those uh, numbers by negative one. So if we just flip, I just flip this graph over. Um, and uh, so I've just, instead of these being negative numbers, I've just turned the same thing into positive numbers. So we can see taking the natural log, this is getting a much bigger number than 90% is. And then in the equation, you, you can see over here, we're taking that natural log and multiplying it by the original number. So that's what I've done in the third graph. So I've taken uh, the natural log of um, 0.1. I put, put it into a positive number here. And then I multiplied it by the 0.1. So it was somewhere around, um, let's say, 0.23. So or 2.3, and then multiply that by 0.1, so it's 0.23. And so you can see how uh, by taking these natural logs and then divide or multiplying them by the proportion really takes your takes your data and kind of uh, flattens it out a little bit. So these these uh, big guys are not going to be quite so important. These ones with big populations at 80 percent, 90 percent, it's it's the uh, the ones that are. Um, more important than in the equation are going to be all these ones that are sort of intermediate to lower uh, population sizes. So we're going to be doing these equations in Excel and I'm going to show you how to break down and uh, big down an equation and actually calculate it. So the very first part of it is you're going to calculate the relative dominance of each species. So the proportion of the total individuals found in, in that are in a particular species is going to be PI. So the first thing is you get the total individuals found in the survey on average over your 10 years and then see what proportion of that total is each individual species. Once you've found those, you're going to get the natural logarithms of those uh, proportions and that reduces the value of the dominating species. We're going to sum um, the uh, product of the original proportion times the natural log of that. So we are, we're basically taking this relative dominance, multiplying it by the natural log, and then we're going to sum that over all the species. And finally, we multiply it by minus one to make it into a positive value. So that's just what that equation 
is showing you here. So the only thing missing from this equation is I goes from species one to whatever your total number of species is, your species richness. So we have the data here for Woodbury Heights, New Jersey that I showed you how to get. And all I've added in at the bottom here is how many years of data. So we've got 2010 all the way over to 2019. And uh, let me just, I was playing around with it. Let me just put here, um, I want to get the uh, average number of birds seen each year. So we're going to go with average number and we're going to equal average. I'm going to highlight that whole row. Oops, I don't know why that moved. Let me undo that. Let me go back up here. Back here. Just so you're wondering, uh, I froze the first couple of rows right here. If you want to freeze the, the species name too, you just go to view freeze panes. And so now as I, um, oh, I unfroze them at that point because it already had them frozen freeze panes like that. And so as I scroll over, you can see I keep the birds listed here. And if I scroll up and down, you can see I have the years. So I'm going equals average. And then I'm going to highlight the number of birds seen each year and click enter. So on average, there was 1.8 yellow shafted flickers. And then I can just get that all the way down. So that's the average number of birds uh, seen every year. And uh, this across the bottom here, this this row, oops, home. I'm just going to put those in blue there. That row across there are the total number of species they saw every year. So I can get the average number of species as well. And it's the same thing. It's just the average of that row. So I'm going to pull that down. And then I can also get the average number of individual birds seen by year. So I can either average this row or I can average these averages that I have before. I'm just going to average this row. So the average year on the survey, they saw 851 birds uh, of on average 48.6, so 48 to 49 species on average. I'm just going to wrap that right there so you can see the word average number. So this total number of individuals is going to be uh, something that we're going to use to calculate the relative dominance of each species. And all the relative dominance is, is how many birds we saw them on average of that species divided by the total number of birds we see on average. So I'm going to give that a name and I'm going to call that um, average birds and then this is my New Jersey data set. So I'm going to just call it NJ. Remember it has to, if we go into the name box to name a constant, it has to have no spaces between the parts of the name and uh, it has to be unique. Uh, otherwise you could be uh, referring to a function or referring to a constant that's already named elsewhere. So I hit enter. So whenever I click on that, that is called average birds NJ. So all I have to do to get the, uh, we're looking at the proportion of the individuals that were from each species, which is P sub I. Subscript that. And that proportion equals the average number simply divided by the total, which is that average birds. These are going to be very small numbers if, you're only, if you've only seen one 
of that particular species in 10 years. That's a pretty small number. And we, and we can just take that, pull it all the way up. So that's your proportion of the population. That is each individual species. Now, if we look at the equation for uh, diversity, I need to pull it up even further. The equation for diversity, uh, we're going to have to uh, take the natural logarithm of that value. So we're going to take the natural logarithm of that. So that's going to equal, put ln as the function for the natural logarithm, open the bracket, click on the value, and close the bracket. And because these values uh, in this column are all small, uh, the natural logarithms are going to be negative. So now we have the natural logarithm of the proportion. In order to calculate the Shannon Wiener diversity index, we're going to take what we have and call up M. And we're going to multiply by what we have in column N. So that is going to be PI times the natural logarithm of PI. So that equals that times that. And hit enter. it all the way down. I'm going to sum that column because we have to sum it over all the species. So I'm going to go equals sum and highlight the values I'm adding together. So that's the sum. And then the diversity index, which uh, is shown by the symbol, the Shannon Wiener is capital H prime. So the diversity index equals that times negative one. So negative one times that sum. And that is your diversity index. Well, pretty close to pi, 3.143074. So, I'm just going to put, I had a second data set put together. This was for Horse Creek, California. And I already went through all of this and got its diversity index, the total number of years, the average number of species, the average number of birds. And so I'm going to put together a little table uh, with all of that information in it. So I've got a separate sheet I called results. And so I had the Horse Creek data, years of data, num average number of birds, average species richness of the diversity, and now I can do my Woodbury Heights data. So I'm going to go equal, go to my Woodbury Heights sheet, my average number of birds is right here. My average species richness, that's my average number of species, equals my average number of species right here. And my diversity index equals 3.14. And I'm just going to drop that guy down to two decimal points. So we can see uh, the average number of birds is different in the two surveys, and we can see the species richness is different in the two surveys, and we can see the diversity index is different in the two surveys. And these are both very different places. Northern California is where you find Horse Creek, and Woodbury Heights is in South Jersey. So now you know how to calculate the diversity index.
So now you know how to calculate diversity, species richness. We've got quite a bit of data in this table. You can put this data on your blog. Um, now let's talk a little bit uh, more what kind of things you could do with the data in the breeding bird survey. So let's graph some trends because we've got, uh, you've got 10 years worth of data and right now we're only looking at averages. So for each of your uh, breeding bird survey routes, uh, you're going to graph the number of species um, in the in the root over time. You could even look at how many individual birds were found in the root over time and see if there's differences between your different locations that uh, might be due to different uh, attributes of the, the habitat or what other species are around there. So we've already got the average species richness uh, over 10 years for each of these sites. We've got the average number of birds they saw on the roots, and we've also calculated the diversity index. So let's look at some trends. Um, and uh, one of the trends I'd like to, to look at is, is there a change in the species richness over the time? So I, I made another sheet called All Species. And I just set up a little table with the years, and then I'm going to pull in my two data sets, the species richness data. So if I go to the New Jersey data set, I can uh, find total species across here. So I'm just going to highlight those numbers for the 10 years. Right click, copy, go back to my spreadsheet. And when I paste that, I'm going to right click in the first cell and I'm transposing the row into a column. So I'm going to hit transpose and there's that data. And then I'll do the same thing for, I have the California Horse Creek data set. So I'll do the same thing there. And I had some problems making some graphs out of this stuff because I'm missing a year. Uh, so it's really good if you can find a complete data set. Pick a route that has all 10 years. It'll make life easier for you. Okay, special transpose. There, so now I have my data sets. And you can see that my missing year is given as a zero here. So I'm going to highlight those, insert, scatter plot. And now I have my scatter plot. You can see pretty clearly that they're pretty consistent with the species richness over the 10 years. Uh, it's just California has always got more species than New Jersey in every year. So I can clean up this graph a little bit. Where I have my zero, I can just delete that value and I'll take it off there. Uh, that's the only way I can get this to work. If I right click on format axis, I can just change that it'll start in 2010 and it'll end in 2019. Close that. I can put a title on here, which would be Species Richness and Breeding Bird Survey. I'm going to type it all out because you know what it is. Uh, I need to add titles for my axes as well. So don't forget to title everything. So one is the number of species on my y-axis. That's my dependent variable. And my independent variable is the year they did the breeding bird surveys. Oops, I've got right there. Breeding bird survey year. And this is a nice graph you can put on your blog. Uh, I also did the same thing just because I was curious uh, looking at the number of birds seen on both of the surveys and so these are the number of birds counted on the breeding bird survey routes in different years and that is not as consistent as it was on species richness where California always had more species uh, but there were some years where there were a lot of species seen in New Jersey well there was one anyway and some where there uh, practically identical, not species, but actually number of individual birds. So I thought that was interesting. You can also look at individual species in this data set and the uh, 
thing I'd like you to do is find a species that you find in both of your data sets. Uh, I'm going, one thing we do when we're analyzing these data is, is you get a lot of practice with Excel. You learn how to do new things like transposing rows into columns and stuff like that. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to uh, teach you how to use um, an if is error match statement um, for comparing two, uh, two arrays of numbers to, or, or in this case, bird names to find uh, things that match up. So that'll be kind of useful. So I want you to uh, graph a trend of a species that's common to both of your bird surveys uh, to see how it's changed over time and if it's different in the different locations. To find a species that's common to both data sets, I'm going to teach you a, a tool in Excel. This can be used for uh, maybe you've got a uh, a list of clients and you're trying to look up a, uh, the name that goes with the phone number. So you're trying to match up the phone number that you have with a list or you've got two mail-in lists and you want to figure out who, where duplicates are so you don't send emails to both of them. And so it is a, you, you have an if statement where you're looking for an error in a match. Um, and so uh, if you're comparing uh, this this value that you have in cell A2 to a whole list to another species list. So this would be the first species in one bird list and this is the entire second bird list. And you go down that second bird list and uh, you're looking for things uh, if they if they don't match up if you don't if you don't have that one. And if you don't have that one, uh, we're going to put nothing. So that's this, this just a little empty space we're going to put in that column. Um, otherwise, if we do find something in the column where we put this uh, description here, uh, put the name. So go back and put the name of the species. So all we need in order to run this then is our um, species list. So I made a sheet called one species because I'm looking for uh, one species to analyze. And I'm going to go over here to the Horse Creek data and I have highlighted my species. I'm going to copy them and I go to the one species list Go to my first column, right click, and I'm just going to paste that in there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the Woodbury data set. Highlight my species, copy, and put them. And you do, you put this uh, if statement in the middle column between them. So I'm going to paste those right here. So now I'm going to type out this statement. Click over here. And I'm putting it right between the two of them. Paste. And you can't see it in this uh, column, but it's there. Um, and, uh, and so the one thing to watch out for is depending on how you've set this data set up, make sure that, um, make sure that it's going to your first species and that's going to put that name in there. So make sure this A2 and A2 are wherever your first species in your first list is. And then also make sure that this array actually matches up with your second species list. So mine does. goes all the way down to 73. And then I'm going to hit enter. And it didn't find a dark-eyed junco on the other list, so it's, it's blank. Now I want to check all of them, so I'm just going to pull this down next to the entire California list. And you can see several of these popped up as matches. They match the this name. If I went on to the New Jersey list, I'd be able to find a red-tailed hawk. A red-tailed hawk. And it just saves you looking through the list to try to find things that are the same. Uh, it's, it's a neat little tr trick. So here we have like the American crow and the American robin, a cowbird, Canada goose. So pick something you might be interested in looking at in the two data sets. So I'm going to pick a really common species, the European starling. And I'm going to look at that. So I'm just copy the name of that. And then down here, I was getting set up to do this. Um, I was going to uh, put species name right here. One species. Here. I don't know. 
I don't know why I won't go there. Hmm. Oh, because I copied it from that second column. There we go. My European, European starter. There we go. All right. So uh, I call I copied it from the uh, the one that had this little um, search in it. So now I go back to my two data sets. I'll go to my New Jersey data set, which I had in alphabetical order, but that was convenient. Look at all these starlings across here. So I can highlight my starling. Right click, copy. Go back here, New Jersey. Right click. Remember, I'm going to transpose this one because it was a row. I want to make it into a column. So I put that in there. And I already had the scatter plot set up. You know how to do this now. So I wasn't going to take the time to do that. And I added a trend line. If you want to add a trend line, you just check on, click on your series, right click. There's the add trend line button so that you can put the trend line on. And I'm going to go now to my California data set, find the European starling. Copy one species, transpose that. There we go. And now I have my two data sets. Remember, there's a there's a missing spot in the California one, so I'm just going to delete that one little point. So we can see quite a difference. The European starling um, is kind of slightly downward trend. I don't know if it would be statistically significant. Uh, that's something for another day. Uh, but we can see it, it does fluctuate. And uh, we have a lot more of them in New Jersey than they do in California. And my chart title, I will call it the European starling. European starlings were uh, a species introduced in New York City by somebody who wanted to introduce all the species that were mentioned by Shakespeare. It was introduced to Central Park in New York and it took several times and attempts to uh, actually get it uh, to get established. And now it has obviously gone all the way across the U.S. So you've learned uh, how to sort of find things in two different data sets and uh, so you've got this is error and match functions now as well. And you can uh, you can look at a lot of different species. It's really kind of interesting to look at these trends and changes. Um, another one I'd looked at, uh, where is that one? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. Another one I'd looked at was the American Crow between my two data sets. And uh, we can see that in California, the American crow was really in decline, uh, where it was actually increasing in New Jersey. And that might give you some ideas for some hypotheses that you could uh, use for looking at these particular uh, data sets. And maybe write up a lab report, because there's so much data in here. This is an easy one to come up with a hypothesis for. And uh, look at these uh, different sites, and you can look at other students, uh, what they've posted. Look at the different sites and see, you know, what's different about them. Why would you expect differences in richness or number of birds or particular species? So I'll ask my students to submit their spreadsheets of all these uh, graphs and calculations um, and update the blog. So in the blog, put in your... Um, root information for the two roots you selected, uh, the, the chart with the number of birds, the richness, and the diversity. Um, you can talk about how the two roots are differ, different and why that you see those differences. Make sure you put full captions on all your tables and, and graphs. You're going to put in your trends. So if you put in a graph of trend of species richness, you could also put in a trend of, of the number of birds over time and the two roots. And then, um, and then your graph of the species that you selected from the that was common to both roots and the 10 year changes in the populations and describe the differences between the roots.
The Brain and Bird Survey is a wealth of information that has been very nicely put together and is available for, for you to use. Um, it's a great one to write a lab report on. There's a lot of things that can control or can influence diversity. Um, it might be that uh, you've got uh, environmental factors such as uh, disturbances that are coming in and uh, so frequently that you can't keep up the diversity or they might be uh, it might be that it's been so stable for so long that competition has reduced the diversity. So you might find the higher diversity of the sites that have a little bit of disturbance, but not a lot. Um, it might have to do with resources available. Uh, you might find really dry sites have lower diversity than sites that have water resources available to them. Um, or it might be the complexity of the environment. Uh, the mountains might have a higher range of, of temperatures and, and light and, and might have a more diverse environment. A lot of things affect diversity, um, uh, differences in habitat, differences in environment, and interactions between species. So it's really a good one to explore for different hypotheses and compare data sets. And uh, I hope you enjoy working with the Breeding Bird Survey and you learn some new uh, skills in Excel.